Hello, my name is Robert Dean Steele, and this is your Cornerstone Community Church Service for January the 23rd. And we're going to open our time with a word of prayer, and then we're going to get right into the Word of God. So, Father, we thank you today for this time, and we thank you, Lord, for this service. We ask that, Lord, today that your blessing would rest upon the word that is presented and the prayers that are offered today. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today we're looking at, uh, I just want to invite you to our in-person service. We meet at Cornerstone Hall. That's number 6 Tache Street in St. Albert. And our doors open at 1045 and our service starts at 11 a.m. So today... We're looking at Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to be looking at the whole armor of God. So it says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. So first of all, Paul says, what you need to be today is strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Now, of course, he says that the only power that we have is, of course, in the Lord. And he says, that's where it begins with us. Then he goes on to say, after you... um, make that decision that you're going to be strong in the Lord and in his power, mighty power. Remember, it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Then he goes on to say this, put on the full armor of God that you may take your stand against the devil's scheme. Now, That's very important. He says, before you can go into battle, you need to have the full armor of God because that's the only way that you're going to be able to stand. Now, in the mindset of the Apostle Paul, of course, he was thinking of a Roman soldier who was preparing for battle. And and he, you know, a Roman soldier basically was given the responsibility of being able to defend that particular territory with him. And next to him would be another Roman soldier who would have that same responsibility. And together they would perform a phylax, which is a full wall of shields and also armor, and of course, the the weapons that they have. Now he says, you got to take a stand, because the enemy has only one agenda, to rob, kill, and destroy. He says, and you need to know about the devil's schemes. And I just revealed to them, his schemes, of course, is to rob, kill, and destroy, but he uses accusation, temptation, and deception to make that happen. So he says this, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against powers in this dark world, and against the spiritual forces in the heavenly realm. So he lists six areas that you need to be aware of when you are in battle. He says, first of all, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. So you need to understand that you cannot use traditional methods and uh, and ways of warfare you have to rely because you're dealing with, first of all, he says, authorities. So you're dealing with high demonic authorities. Then he says against, um, uh, against also as well, he says against rulers. He says you're dealing with rulers, you're dealing with authorities. He says you're dealing with powers of this dark world. Jesus said that men love darkness rather than light. Because the simple fact is that their deeds are evil. Now, also, Jesus said that the God of this world has blinded people. That is, of course, Satan has blinded people. And what Paul does is gives us a little bit of an indication of the spiritual realm. Now, there are thrones, dominions, authorities, principalities, powers, rulers, and spiritual hosts. So he then goes on to say, against powers of this dark world, against spiritual forces in the heavenly realms. So he says, these are spirits that you cannot see, but they can be taken down with, of course, the weapons that he gives and also the armor. So then he starts on, therefore, put on the full armor of God. So when the evil day comes, you may be able to stand your ground and having done everything to stand, everything you can to stand. So notice there he says three times, stand. Now that is Jewish parallelism. But when you add one more time, it's an extra emphasis. He says, stand, stand, and stand. You can't give one 
one inch to the enemy. In fact, it says uh, it says when you when when you open the door, the enemy can come in like a flood. So you must stand. He says first of all, of course, when that evil day comes, you say, okay, when is that evil day? That day is the day that you choose to stand and serve the Lord. And so it's literally every single day, but also as well, that day of great spiritual battle, whenever that may happen. And we all have those times and seasons of spiritual battle. And that's why we need to put on the whole armor of God. He says, what you do is you need to understand, stand your ground, and then everything you can do, you need to stand. So he he says, the responsibility is up to you to stand. Don't sit there and say, God, can you help me? God says, yeah, I'll help you. But you also got to make the decision to stand. You're not going to back down. You're not going to backslide. You're not going to back off. You are going to stand. Then he says it again. This is the fourth time. So he's really, really meaning what he says. Stand, therefore, he says, with the belt buckled around your waist. So the first thing he says is the first thing you need to do is put that buckle around your waist. And he says, what is that? The breast, he says, um, the breastplate of righteousness. So the very first thing that you put on your waist is you put on that breastplate of righteousness. That's what you need to do. Well, it starts off, first of all, with the belt of truth. So you put on the belt of truth. Basically, what he's doing is he's putting it on like someone would normally put on. So when a Roman soldier puts it on, the first thing he does is put on the belt of truth. So when you are walking in truth, you know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. No one can come to the Father but by him. And so you are already walking in the truth. You know you have the truth and the truth will set you free. So first of all, when you come against the enemy and come against his adversaries and those who do his work, you, of course, put on that belt of truth. You have the truth. You have the word of God and you're standing in that word today. Then secondly, he says, you put on the breastplate of righteousness. Now the belt of truth protects those parts of you that produce and reproduce truth. Then the second part, that breastplate of righteousness is, of course, the righteousness that Jesus Christ has given to us. We were declared righteous when we gave our lives to Jesus Christ. The old things have passed away. Our sins have been covered by the blood. And so because of that, we are righteous and we have our hearts protected by righteousness. You got to have your heart protected with righteousness and it means to flow out of you. You know, the Bible says we're to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength and love our neighbor as ourselves. Now, what will happen is when you love the Lord, his love flows into you, but also his righteousness is that, I, I like to use that balm of Gilead, what comes in there. The, the two of them together are healing your heart and in turn, then you can be a channel of righteousness. So you put on that breastplate of righteousness, it protects your heart. Then he says, and notice he, then he says, next you put your feet, your feet fitted with the gospel or the readiness of the gospel of peace. So what you do is you put on your belt, you put on your breastplate. The next thing you need to do is, of course, put on the boots of peace. I love that. Wherever you go, you that is your territory. That's what the Bible tells us in Joshua 1. And so wherever you go, you are bringing a peace. And you have with you the Prince of Peace. And of course, peace is the absence of conflict and warfare. And thus God is using you as a peacemaker. I love what Jesus says in the Beatitudes when he says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Now, in the book of uh, Ephesus, or Ephesians, Paul tells us that we are the sons of God. And so as the sons of God, what we're doing is we're taking that those boots of peace. Wherever we go, we're bringing with us that peace that passes all understanding. And we're distributing to those that we come. And it's the peace of God that enables us to walk in victory over the enemy. Then he puts on, in addition to this, you take up the shield of faith. And uh, so that's what you do. You take up the shield of faith next. And so you, you put on the, the first part. Then you take up that shield of faith because you know that it is the, and it goes on to say this, um, with 
within you can extinguish all the fiery darts of the evil one. Basically, in Paul's day, of course, they, they fired these fiery darts. And this particular shield had the ability to extinguish them. They were not able to penetrate and they were not able to burn up the um, the shields. And so they were protected. And it is our faith, that trust in God. Faith is the substance of hope for things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. When you do that, you are walking today in God's uh, faith. And faith is trust in God. Now, these three remain, 1 Corinthians 13, 13, faith, hope, and love. Now, faith, of course, is the belief that God is going to be with you and you trust him. Hope is that, of course, you have a future and all of it is based on the love of God. And then he goes on to say this, it will, it will extinguish accusation, temptation, and deception and every form of attack that the enemy hurls at you today. He says, take up the helmet of salvation, which is the sword of uh, so you take up that helmet of salvation, and what you do, you have the faith that protects you. It's that that wonderful protection that you have. It, your faith protects you. It's a it's an armor. Then you put on that shield of that helmet of salvation, and basically what that does is protect your mind. Because so often what happens with us is our minds take us someplace where we're not supposed to go. That's why it says in Romans twelve one and two, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. To present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him, which is your spiritual worship. Then he says, do not be conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you would know the perfect and acceptable will of God. So basically what you're doing is you're protecting your mind, your thoughts, your lives. You're taking a hold of every thought. You're taking a hold of every strong thought, imagination, and as well, stronghold. And you're breaking them and you're protecting your mind. And of course, also as well, because you put that helmet of salvation on, that salvation is allowing you to have your mind transformed. And then you can develop the mindset of Christ. Then he goes on to take this. He says this, you need to take up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So basically, he says, you've got everything that you need. The sword of the spirit, of course, is the word of God. And of course, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharp and intuitive sword. It is able to destroy every thought and intent. It is able to deal with every situation. When Jesus was in the temptation in the wilderness, he used the word of God. And even when Satan tried to twist it around because Jesus knew the word of God and he also had divine wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and insight, he was able to defeat him, and you will as well. So whenever you're going against the enemy, use the word of God, just says, thus saith the word of the Lord. And then he goes on to say this. He says, in all occasions, pray in the spirit with all kinds of, uh, of prayers and requests. With this in mind, always be alert and always keep praying for all the saints. So he says, the last part that makes this armor complete is, of course, in prayer. And prayer is that wonderful two-way communication between you and God. And, of course, I can't emphasize enough the importance of having prayer. And he says, in what should you do with prayer and requests? So he's talking about personal prayer, and he's also talking about intercessory prayer and requests. He says, make your requests known to God, and the peace of God will pass us all understanding. And he says, with this in mind, he says, you need to always be alert, be watching. Remember, he talked about standing, but he also talked about being alert, being aware of what's going on around you. Don't walk around in a fog or don't walk around in that situation and say, ah, oh, everything's okay. It's not okay. You've got an adversary who wants to destroy you. He'll do everything he can to, to to shut you down. But when you have the armor of God that he's been talking about, when you make that decision to stand, he says, with this in mind, he says, always keep praying. And not just for yourselves, but for all the saints. What he's getting across here is the fact that as a believer, you and I are involved in a spiritual warfare. We need to have the armor 
and the weapons of our warfare so that we can bring them down. Because it says in 2 Corinthians 10, 4 to following, it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against, uh, and it talks about the weapons of a warfare are not carnal, they're mighty to bringing down the stronghold. So what you and I need to do is exercise that wonderful authority that we have in Jesus Christ. And we need to stand in that victory today. That's what he's getting across today in that situation. So what I'd like to do right now is I'd like to pray that God would today be with you. So Father, today, as we get ready, Lord, to close our time together, we are in our prayer time. And Paul said we are to pray uh, in all occasions with requests and prayers. So Father, today, we've learned how to put on the armor of God. We've learned how to put on each piece. And Lord, we know their function now and what they're designed to do. So we're going to do that right now. And Father, as well, in this time and place of prayer, we do pray that, Lord, in this moment, we would recognize that we are in spiritual warfare and we need your help today. We have an adversary who will show no mercy. We have an adversary who will not in any way stop. So, Lord, we need to stand, as it says four times, stand. So we're going to stand, Lord. And as well, Lord, we're going to commit ourselves to you right now. And we ask the Lord right now, throughout this day, you're going to lead and guide and direct us. We are going to consecrate ourselves to you right now in the name of Jesus. Also as well, I want to pray for your needs. You could have a physical, spiritual, emotional, intellectual, financial, or family need. And I want to pray for that right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you today for First of all, of course, Philippians chapter 4, verse number 19, that says you'll supply every need according to your riches and glory. So right now, Lord, would you supply that need? Secondly, Lord, thank you that you are our healer, that by your stripes we are healed right now in Jesus' name, and we claim that victory and that breakthrough. Thank you for that today. Thank you for that healing. And we not just pray for ourselves, but those that we love as well. So, Father, we just simply commit this to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, again, I want to encourage you to join us for our in-person service. It is at Cornerstone Hall, number 6 Tache Street in St. Albert. And our doors open at 1045 and our service starts at um, 11 a.m. Thank you for spending time with me. God bless you and have yourself a great and godly day.